I'm just going to take a random guess and assume you're desperately watching this video because you need to print out a university or a school assignment or a job resume for tomorrow. If that's the case, you've come to the right place because hopefully this video is going to show you how to resolve any and all issues with the printer you're trying to fix. Now, printer issues can be quite complicated, so it's important that we actually take a step back and sort of examine the whole situation and start from the top down. So the most important thing to do, first of all, is actually make sure the printer itself is working fine without issues. Now, there are a number of steps you can take to find out if it's the printer, or if it's your computer, or if it's the network, or if it's the software but by far the easiest thing to narrow it down to is the printer. So the first thing you'll do is just take a look at your printer. Is it turning on? Is the power switched on? Is the ethernet cable plugged in the back correctly if you're connecting it to your Wi-Fi router? Test it out a bit, press a few buttons, try and print a test image or a page. If it's not working, it may be a hardware issue with your printer. And at this stage, I would also recommend visiting the manufacturer's website for your particular printer and reading through the instruction manual because it may just be a single button you need to press and the printer works fine. So go ahead, check out the manual on the website, Google it if you have to. Most printers will actually have the model number inscribed either on the front or the back. So if you're struggling to find out what model or brand your printer is, just have a look around the exterior and go from there. Okay, so this is my printer. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty standard printer. It's just a $100 crappy one from the local um, technology store. It's worked pretty well. It is AirPlay compatible. I haven't really had any issues with it. Um, so you can see sort of all the branding on the sides and the actual model number there. You can see it's DocuPrint P265DW. Now, this is where it's going to be handy consulting your owner's manual because all these instructions will be covered there. To set mine up with Wi-Fi, it's super easy. I just press the little Wi-Fi button, I press OK a few times, and then I press the WPS button on my router. And that actually pretty much sets everything up and it's good to go. And then I can actually print a test page from here, which will show me if the printer is working or not. So again, look at your own personal printer verify that it's working first, it's not a hardware issue with your actual printer, and then go from there. Back to the video. So, once you think that your printer is working, and you think it's possibly something else, the next thing you're gonna be looking at into is, again, isolating the issue further. So, because this is a Mac OS tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume you probably have an iPhone as well. Or if you don't have an iPhone, you at least have probably a different computer in the house. So, what I want you to do is go ahead and just try from that other device and see if you can print something from your computer. So if you've got an iPhone, if your friend or your roommate has a different laptop, try to print something from there and see if you can. If you can, good, your printer's working, your network's working, it's your computer. If you can't, it's probably gonna be something else. So once again, once you've narrowed that down, we can drill down to get the actual root cause of the issue. Now, I'll show you quickly how you can print something on iOS using something called Air print. It's very, very easy. You basically just find a file or an image, you click on it, you use a little share icon and you try to air print it. If your printer is connected to the network and it's working, it should pop up. By the way, make sure your printer is actually connected to a network if it is a wireless printer. There's a couple ways of doing this. Again, consult your manufacturer's guide. You may need to download a driver on the website. You may need to physically plug it in using an ethernet cable into the back of your router, or you may just need to press the Wi-Fi key on the printer and the WPS key on your router, and that will allow them to connect. So once you've again narrowed it down, at this stage, if you're still with me, it's probably gonna be something on your computer. And that's good news because that's where the really helpful part of this tutorial kicks in. So first things first, again, starting from the top, we're gonna to start very broadly and try and narrow it down. You need to make sure that your actual Mac is up to date. So the easiest way to do this is just come up here to the little Apple logo, click that, click about this Mac, and little information tab will pop up and you'll be able to actually see the version number here. 
So as you can see, it's 2020. I'm on Mac OS Catalina, which is the most up-to-date version. Uh, the software version is 10.15.1. Now, if you're not up to date, you can simply click down here, software update, that will open up. You can click update. You can see I actually need to update to 10.15.2. So if you do need to do that update, leave your computer for 10 or 15 minutes to do its thing. Uh, you may need to do a time machine backup before this just in case anything goes wrong so I don't lose information. Totally up to you. After your computer is all up to date, the next thing you're gonna do is you're actually gonna come back up here to the Apple logo. You're gonna click on system preferences and you're just gonna go into the printers and scanners menu option. By the way, most of these steps are actually already on Apple's website. So if you haven't already seen this particular support article, definitely give it a read. I'm gonna be running through some of the things in this particular support article on this video. Um, but again, make sure you familiarize yourself with this and look into it. So going back to the printer and scanner menu, sometimes you'll be able to see the printer pop up here. As you can see, mine is an FX DocuPrint. It does pop up, so mine's actually working fine. Now, if yours doesn't, you can come down here, you can click the plus icon, you can try to find it and try to manually connect to it that way. If it is popping up here, which it more than likely is if you've used it in the past, but it says red, uh, it's got a little red status icon or you still can't print anything from it, a very easy solution is to actually just delete it and re-add it. So you can do this by selecting your particular printer, clicking the little minus button and deleting the printer. Now this doesn't necessarily delete any of the drivers or anything. If you're using a up-to-date version of Mac OS, your Mac will actually nine times out of 10 automatically download the drivers it needs from the manufacturer's website. It's quite intuitive in that respect. So now that your printer is gone, we're gonna to try to re-add it. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna click add, add printer or scanner. And hopefully you'll have a little nearby printer uh, menu pop up, which will show your particular printer. If not, you can click add printer or scanner and you can try to search for it manually. As you can see here, it's coming up already. So I'm just gonna select that. And as you can see here, it's gathering printer information. And this particular printer can use AirPrint. It has AirPrint available, so it automatically comes up for there. Uh, if it doesn't, you can just click on auto select, but we're just gonna go for AirPrint for now. Now you can rename your printer if you want. I'm not going to. So we'll just add that. And as you can see, it'll actually take a little bit to actually set the printer up. So this is again, just setting it up, downloading drivers or software or bits and pieces it needs to actually read and interface with the printer. And as you can see there, it's added successfully. And if I go to print something now, it's probably gonna work. Now, if this is still not working or you can't delete the printer for some reason, uh, what you can do is take it to the next step. So you can actually hold the control key on your keyboard while you click on the printer. And now you can see you actually get a few more options popping up, which will give you a little bit more room to move. So you can actually reset the entire printing system. Now this is a little bit more extreme than simply removing a printer because this will actually reset a lot of the settings to default and try and clear out any caged drivers or anything in the system. So reset the printing system, re-add the printer again, see if it works. Nine times out of 10, you will fix the issue and you'll be able to print. But if you can't, there are a few more steps that you can use. So we'll shut down system preferences and we will open up the search bar. Now, a shortcut to do that is hold command and then press the space button. And what we want to search for is actually terminal. And then we'll open up the terminal program now, this might look a little bit intimidating, but it really isn't. Um, you really don't need to do anything too crazy in here. I'm actually gonna walk you through the whole thing step by step. So what we want to get into now is something called CUPS, capital C-U-P-S. So CUPS stands for the Common Unix Printing System. Now this is something that was actually developed by Apple, but it's not enabled by default. What that means is you actually have to go into the terminal, 
manually make it available so you can actually use it. Now Cups is essentially kind of like a back-end admin interface to printers. It gives you a little bit more options and room to maneuver than you normally would get in just the standard settings on your Mac. So to enable Cups, we want to type in C-U-P-S to the terminal. We also want to type in C-T-L and then we want to space capital web, capital W-E-B, capital I and an interface equals yes and then we want to hit the return key on our keyboard. We'll close down terminal, we will open up Safari, open up a new tab and we're going to go to local host colon 631 and as you can see here you actually get the cups admin panel. Now what this will do is again it just gives you a little bit more room to try and diagnose the issue. So if you come over here to administration, you actually get a couple of options here. So you can try to add a printer from Cups. Now, if you want to log in, this is just your typical Mac login name and password. Now, once you're logged in, again, you can see a few more extra options here. So you may be able to see a local printer or a network printer or other particular printers on there. So I'm not going to go any further here, I'm just going to go back, but I just wanted to show you that it does give you a few more options. Now you can also come in here to find new printers, and this is going to essentially force the computer to search and display all of the printers possible. Because sometimes when you're using just the typical um, system preferences, it won't actually come up, but here it should. Now as you can see, no other printers available because there aren't. So we'll go back to administration. Now you can actually manage printers. So if you have a particular printer that has been added and is having issues, you can click on this and you can do some maintenance. So you can force all the jobs to cancel. You can reject them, pause, print test page. If you come in here, you can actually modify or you, know, you have a, a, a bit more options to actually fix a potential issue with the printer. And that's pretty much all that there is to do here. So again, I can't really go too much in depth because there's not really like a set resolution or fix for every particular issue. But I just wanted to show that the CUPS admin panel gives you a few more options to actually go in there and try to diagnose the problem. Okay, so if you've had a play around with the CUPS admin panel and it still hasn't fixed your issue, there's one more potential thing you can try, and this is something that the actual Apple support article recommends at the end, and that is removing the printer drivers. So a printer driver is essentially like a little command line or a set of instructions that allows your printer to interface with your Mac and Mac OS. Sometimes drivers can get corrupted or the wrong driver will be installed or it can't get updated and that can cause some communication issues between your printer and your Mac. So if you want to remove printer drivers and start afresh, it's very easy. You need to open up the finder window. So click on the finder window, click on go, click on connect to folder and you want to type in slash library forward slash printers forward slash and then you want to click go. And once that has opened up, you can actually just click and drag and highlight all of these, or you can single click one, hold down command on the keyboard A. So command A, that will select everything. And you can actually just delete all of these folders and empty them from the trash, and then restart your computer, and then try again. And as you can see here, it's actually got a, a little folder for all the different printers I've used. So I haven't actually used a Canon printer in years. I actually don't, don't even know where this has come from. And this is something that may be causing confusion with my current printer. So this is definitely something I'd want to delete. And with the Epson printer, I'm going to leave that because my printer is working fine. But if again, if I was having issues, that is something I would delete. Now, if all of these fixes still do not fix your issue, another thing you can try is opening up a new user account on your Mac and seeing if it will work there. 
And then another thing, again, you can try is really dialing down into the network that you're using. So a few common issues are, you know, the network isn't connecting properly. Um, your printer isn't connected to the network. Your own computer isn't connected to the right Wi-Fi network. That's a very important one. A lot of places, houses, apartments, etc., will have different Wi-Fi networks or different bands of network. So you might have 2.4 gigahertz or a 5 gigahertz band, and they can sometimes be classed as two separate networks. So you want to make sure that your printer, if it is wireless, is connected to the exact same network that your particular computer is connected to. So an easy way to test that out is to come up here to your Wi-Fi symbol, click on that, and you want to make sure that your the network you're connected to is the same as the one that your printer is connected to. So as you can see here, I'm connected to the five gigahertz version of our home Wi-Fi. And if you go into the printer, there will be a button or some instructions that you can go into and actually print out a test page. And that will show you what network your printer is connected to, if it is connected to a network. So that's it from me, guys. I do hope that this tutorial has helped you out. I hope you're able to print out that important document, smash your assignment or your test or your job interview tomorrow. And if this has helped you, leave a like. And I'd also appreciate if you guys left some feedback or some comments in the comment section because I do read every comment. And I will also try to chip in and help if you guys have any further issues. But without further ado, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.